What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Nader's Week 6 Game Picks in the process. Uh, week 5 recap. You truly went 6-8. and eight. Got my first uh, losing record for a whole week there. So, uh, you know, humble us a little bit. But, you know, that was then. This is now. So we're going to move on. Um, we got our Week 6 uh, bye weeks. Is uh, The two teams on byes for this week are going to be the Steelers and the Packers. Two teams that met in the Super Bowl. Um so two and two teams that have yellow in their attire. So those are your two uh, bye week teams. And uh, without further ado, let's get to the other fifteen matchups for week six. All right. So let's start off with uh, Thursday night football: Broncos at Chiefs. Broncos at Chiefs. Not much to say here. Chiefs have really dominated the Broncos for the past six years, I believe. And a um, couple of couple of notes here that um, for the Broncos, we have a um, um, the. Frank Clark, former chief, is out for the game. He was playing out with the Denver Broncos. Um, Broncos made a lot of changes to their defense. Uh, so, uh, But in a division game, anything can happen. Travis Kelsey on the other side of the ball is questionable, which I think he should be a game-time decision and ready to play. This game's in Arrowhead, and uh, the Chiefs are very hard to beat at home. So uh, I got the Chiefs winning here at 30-20. to 20. Now on to the Sunday slate of games. Uh, London game right here. Ravens at Titans. Uh, these two teams last played each other in the wild card in uh, the of the 2020-21 season. And the uh, Ravens had the last laugh. And they beat them in, their own, in Tennessee's house. And this time around, Tennessee's coming off of a loss. Both these teams are coming off division losses. Division opponent losses. And uh, honestly, the way that the Ravens lost felt kind of... Felt like they could potentially teeter their season towards more mediocre than what it looked like they were looking pretty good in the beginning one of the more better teams in the AFC but now that's kind of in question and personally I think the Titans are gonna handle business in London uh I got him winning here by a score of 24 to 23 and uh this will definitely set in route some concerns for the Ravens <clears throat> Panthers at Dolphins uh, Panthers still looking for their first win. Uh, Bryce Young needs protection. Uh, Teron Armstead is on IR for the Dolphins, so that's their left uh, left tackle. So that's not to his blindside tackle because he's left-handed, but still, Teron Armstead, big part of that offense, um, of how they can run the ball. Devon A-Chain is also on IR, so expect Raheem Mostert to carry most of the load. And uh, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle should play, so... Uh, the Panthers got a lot to deal with already. But, so uh, this game in Miami, I got the Miami Dolphins winning over the Panthers, 41-17. to All right, Saints at Texans. Uh, last week, the Texans uh, lost at Atlanta, and they're coming how play another NFC South opponent, uh, the Saints, which just came off a 34 to nothing shutout win against the Patriots. So Saints on the road in Houston. Last time these two teams met was a season opener of the 2019 season. Um, where Marshawn Lattimore was matched up with DeAndre Hopkins. And uh, it was a Monday night game, a uh, doubleheader on Monday night, the first one, I think. And uh, the Texans uh, were in the lead. Uh, they had taken the lead. They were up by one. The Saints kicked the field goal and went up, went up by two. The Texans threatened late to get another field goal in, but they were too far out of range. I think DeAndre Hopkins went for over 150 receiving yards that game, too. But this time around, Texans are home. Uh, I think the Tex I think the Saints are gonna win here because of that defense. Uh, Cameron Jordan, Demario Davis, um, Marshawn Lattimore, obviously as mentioned. Defense that has a lot of veterans, and I know veteran defenses and Dennis Allen, the coach for the Saints, are they shouldn't let a rookie quarterback pick them apart. I mean, C.J. Stroud is very nice, and so far probably should have been the number one overall pick, but he's still a rookie. And uh, a defense like the Saints, I don't I'm not sure he's seen. He was able to pick apart the Steelers, but they're kind of, you know, up and down so far. So I got the Saints prevailing here on the road against the Texans 23-16. to A uh, defensive, tough-fought tough, tough fought defensive game here. All right, now we're going to move on to the Commanders at Falcons. Commanders at Falcons. Falcons are undefeated at home with Desmond Ritter as the starting quarterback. I think this streak ends because the Commanders are losers of three straight. Uh, they... Mm, uh, they, I don't know if they have a buy last week. I'm not sure, but they, they definitely uh, can't. If they lose another one, it's going to be bad. It's going to be turmoil, which I don't, I don't, I would, I would want that. But I just think the Falcons, which are going to start showing some more promise in the aerial game with their weapons and uh, the, their pretty decent receiving core, uh, I think maybe they'll find some mismatches. You know, DJ Moore uh, went for 230 against the Commanders, so the Commanders know that the Falcons are going to try to attack them in the air. 
And um, even the commander's run defense was vulnerable against the Bears. And uh, don't sleep on the two two monster punch, uh, two headed punch of Tyler Algier and Bijan Robinson with that good old, very solid old line behind in, in Atlanta. But I expect this to also be a one possession game. Commanders winning here, twenty seven to twenty five. And uh, you know the Falcons are having to fight for that uh, division lead with the Buccaneers and the Saints. This division is looking more competitive than uh, uh, fans assumed at the beginning of the season. <clears throat> Colts at Jaguars. Uh, the Jags coming off a big win against the Bills. The Colts uh, coming off a win against the Titans. Now they're playing each other, two division opponents, which the uh, the Colts um, have, uh, they played in week one, actually. the They played in, Indiana in Indianapolis. Uh, the Jaguars beat the Colts 31 to 21. And now they're playing each other the second time. It's hard to beat a good team twice. And I do think the Colts are a good team. I mean, their defense is good. Uh, that new leadership, uh, they just paid... Uh, Jonathan Taylor uh, the extension but the other running back they had is uh has has 400 rushing yards on the season he's only played five games Zach Moss so um it's nice to have you can't have a too crowded of a backfield just ask the Philadelphia Eagles and the Seattle Seahawks so uh yeah I'm gonna say here that the Colts prevail over the Jags uh the Jags are at home I'm not saying they're not they're gonna put on the snoozer but uh the Colts defense um you know handled Tennessee uh with Good poise, especially late in the game when it's hard, you know, where those good teams really separate themselves because they know how to close out games, uh, keep a good, keep a lead and uh, finish the game off and not give up that lead. I see this being similar where the Colts here uh, are taking the lead, taking the fight to the Jags and staying ahead. And the Jags are trying to fight and claw late. Uh, but it's going to be a good, tough divisional game as usual. So I got the Colts over the Jaguars in Jacksonville, 24 to 20. Seahawks at Bengals. This is, a little, this is a tough one to pick because the Bengals are, we're teetering and now Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase together threw a knockout punch uh, last week and um, took advantage of their mismatches. Uh, no T. Higgins, but it didn't matter. Uh, put the ball in your playmaker's hands and they'll go, go win the game for you is what they said. And Joe Burrow said, well, Jamar Chase is my playmaker. I'm going to let him go win the game. He had 15 catches for 192 yards and three touchdowns. And this week he's going to be matched up against... Uh, well, the Seahawks secondary in general, but more notably, Devin Witherspoon, the rookie uh, rookie corner from Illinois. Uh, so this is going to be a good matchup here. Uh, I don't see, I don't see the, I don't see the Bengals running the ball down. Like I see both teams trying to establish the run, but I see both defenses holding it pretty good. Maybe the Bengals will have a harder time defending Kenny, uh, Kenneth Walker, the, the Kenneth Walker. But uh, Geno Smith is going to have to have a great game if he wants to compete with Joe Burrow here and I see this being uh, a fairly good scoring game but I think the Bengals at home are are, are gonna take advantage of this matchup and uh, try to go for a back-to-back -back wins here and the Seahawks um, the Seahawks are just gonna be uh, wrong place wrong time uh, the Bengals are I think are gonna catch fire in this game so we'll see what happens but I got the Bengals winning 30 to 21 Vikings at Bears Vikings at Bears so these uh, the Vikings have beat the Bears their last four matchups, uh, they're four no in the last four matchups they played them. So I really do think it's not an upset alert necessarily because the Vikings are, I mean they're competitive but they're losing the one score games versus last year they were winning them. So um, you could some people are saying that their Super Bowl window is closing, but ignoring all that, it's still the regular season. You gotta win, you you still gotta go play the games. So they're playing the Bears at Soldier Field. I think the Bears are gonna win here. Uh, you know they. Um, Lost a great legend, uh, part of their team, Dick Butkus. They played inspired on Thursday night. Uh, I think they'll keep it going here. Uh, their D line played a lot, played very good. I think they can shut down the running attack of the Vikings, which hasn't been, which the Vikings offense all season has been pretty much one dimensional. Uh, and Justin Jefferson is not playing, so um, it gives them a chance to get after Kirk Cousins here. And uh, you know he he deals a lot. He's good at dealing, but I mean if you get after him. Uh, it should go your way. I still see a tough competitive match here. Uh, special teams probably being the deciding factor that wins this game. But I got the Bears winning here at home, 27-23. to 23. 49ers at Browns, 49ers at Browns. The 49ers uh, beating Dallas last week was the best defense they had faced until that point. Made quick works of that, and now they're playing the Cleveland Browns, which is the number one ranked defense in the AFC. And they um, are coming off of a bye week. And they're home hosting the 49ers. Uh, I see this being... I'm not sure if Watson's playing or not, but I'm 
pretty positive that the uh, Browns are going to give the Niners one of some of their best shots. And I think the Niners are going to get off to a slower start than usual. Maybe Brock Purdy gets sacked a couple of times because Miles Garrett is, um, you know, hard to account for. Um, but I do see the Niners getting into, like, sticking to their script, of course, and their defense just, I can't see their defense giving up more than 24 points, uh, more than 24 points, unless they're playing a division rival, maybe, but, uh, since the Browns' defense is their strength, and the Niners, uh, and they, they've had a bye week, I would give them, I would say that they're gonna, they're gonna compete and have a chance, but in the end, I just don't see them, uh, matching all three aspects of the game as well as the Niners have done all season they have really not shown hardly any weaknesses so I got the Niners winning here on the road in Cleveland 34 to 23 Pats at the Raiders Patriots at Raiders the tuck rule game right here these two opponents played uh the Pats are not not very good uh if they want a chance to win this game I would say they have to establish the run try not to pass it so much because it seems like that's putting Mac Jones in jeopardy the Raiders just need to win consecutive games. I don't, they haven't won consecutive games all year. Uh, that would be good for their fan base because, you know, they're rallying behind. Garoppolo's won games before. Max Crosby is a great defensive player. Uh, and Shannon Jones still out. Devonta Adams nursing a shoulder injury. He wasn't quite 100% in that game, and that win they had on Monday night against the Packers. But I got the Raiders winning back-to-back -back games here. Uh, should handle the Patriots, who don't have very good of an offense. Um... A defense are missing uh, Christian Gonzalez and Matt Judon, who got injured when they played Dallas. So I think the Raiders, uh, maybe Josh Jacobs has uh, over 100 yards rushing in this game and uh, a couple of scores. And that could uh, that would propel Raiders fans into more um, into more vaunted territory. So I got the Raiders winning here in L.A. in Las Vegas, 20 to 16. All right, that takes us to the Lions at the Bucks. This is my upset alert of the week. Upset alert of the week. Uh, the, the Lions are looking like a pretty, pretty big foe here in the NFC. But don't sleep on the Buccaneers and Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans and uh, Levante David and those veterans um, like Vita Vea on defense. They have so many veterans. Carlton Davis, good secondary. Antoine Winfield Jr. is playing his best ball. And Todd Bowles, you can't, you can't count out Todd Bowles. I mean, this guy held Patrick Mahomes to nine points. In, in the in the Super Bowl they played. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, I'm pretty confident. I think a lot of points get scored because Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Lions, has Jared Goff uh, on pace to going over 5,000 passing yards and probably over 40 touchdowns. And, I mean, who doesn't like to see that? Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, last year at this time, Detroit lost to the Pat the Pats 29 to nothing. But this time around, uh, they're going to score more than 29 points, but they're going to lose to the Buccaneers. Uh, that's what I'm predicting. Upside alert of the week. So let's see. Uh, let's see if those cannons fire off a lot of shots uh, this Sunday. Uh, it's going to be 35 bucks, 31 Lions. Cardinals at Rams. Cardinals at Rams. An NFC West matchup here. Uh, the Rams coming off of a uh, uh, fairly underwhelming performance, second half performance against the Eagles, where they couldn't score any points. Uh, they had Cooper cut back, uh, him and Puka Nakua now a two-punch. two, two punch. They traded away Van Jefferson because a uh, former second-round pick. They don't really have use for him anymore. He was the odd man out as Puka Nakua's rise. Um, and uh, the Cardinals are a tough team, but without still without Murray, still without uh, formidable weapons. I think James Conner is nursing an injury, so he may not play. So that it kind of just sets them back a little bit. I think they're going to compete. I mean, they have a chance to win this game, of course, but... I just don't see it happening uh, as the Rams are also looking ahead or are also looking to uh, um, attack a hard, a hard schedule. And it starts with a win over a division opponent uh, since they so I, I, got, I got the Rams in L.A. So if I say I'm winning 24 to 18 over the Arizona Cardinals, who still only win this so far this season is against the Cowboys. All right. We got the Eagles at the Jets. I believe the Jets have never beat the Eagles. Never. And all their long history, dating back to the 60s. So is this going to be the game where they win? I don't think so, unfortunately, um, because the Jets at home have not played well. Uh, Zach Wilson has been playing better. But then again, more of it probably due to them utilizing Brees Hall in the running game more. You know, they have uh, Dalvin Cook and Michael Carter as well. So they have a good backfield and their defense is solid. But against the Eagles team who really, who are... Um, professionals at mastering controlling the line of scrimmage especially on offense and on defense because i mean they've drafted heavy d line 
And when uh, when all your defensive players come from Georgia, a team that's won the national championship two of the last three years, uh, it, it, it says that your defense should be sh is young, hungry, fast, and stout. So uh, that's going to be a big challenge for the Jets as a... Uh, uh, winning the, the line of scrimmage. I think they can do it on defense. Uh, uh, I, th I would say that I think they can do it on offense, uh, run the ball, obviously. But on defense, it's going to be very tough to stop uh, Jalen Hurts in that offensive line with that uh, running game they have as well. A.J. Brown's an elite receiver. Devontae Smith uh, can't take your eyes off of him either. So uh, it's going to be a tough task. Two green teams. I got the Eagles over the Jets 29-20. to 20. All right, that takes us to Sunday Night Football. And I don't know why the Giants are on Sunday Night Football, but hey, it's okay because this game was the wide wide right, wide left field goal from the Super Bowl. Giants at Bills. Um, Bills coming off a loss, so don't expect this to be pretty for the Giants who are scrappy, trying their best, but they're just not, they're just not that good, uh, unfortunately, for their, for their offense. Um, they need Saquon Barkley back to get some kind of spark. Darren Waller has been okay, but he, he's... If the defenses take him away, there's not many other threats from the Giants offense. Jalen Hyatt, the rookie, still not on seeing the field as much. So, yeah, I think the Bills here hand, take care of business. Maybe it's a game where their running game gets 100, 120 to 175 yards total. And Josh Allen doesn't put the ball that much in the air. And uh, I got the Bills winning at home here over the Giants 30-14. to 14. And that takes us to Monday Night Football. Du -du -du -du, the last game of the week. And we got the Cowboys at the Chargers. Uh, the Rams hosted a game earlier in the week, so all these games are in L.A. Mm -hmm. Go go figure. Um, so the Cowboys here coming off of a big, uh, bad loss. Um, uh, got exploited many different ways. Uh, the Chargers coming off of a bye week, so they're fresh. Uh, Justin Herbert was injured going into the bye, so he's coming out feeling better. Austin Eckler will be active for them on Monday night. The Cowboys signed Rashawn Evans, a middle linebacker, causing Leighton Van Der Esch's head in the IR from a neck injury. CJ Goodwin towards ACL, one of our one of the Cowboys special teamers, head into IR. Kevontae Turpin, uh, who caught the only touchdown against the Niners, is heading to IR uh, for a couple of weeks. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a big challenge for the Cowboys, uh, just as much as it is for the Chargers. I don't think they've done so well coming off of buys in the past, and uh, their schedule doesn't get easier either. So both these teams are looking to, in a way, rebound, and because uh, you know you can argue that these teams are kind of similar. As in, the Chargers are that team in the AFC that uh, even when they're at their best, they can't get over that hump and advance to the Super Bowl or get past the AFC divisional round or championship, much like the Cowboys. So uh, a little commonality there. I can relate. I, I can definitely relate. But for this game, yeah, it's a must win. Uh, it's a must win. I think the Cowboys are going to pull out all the stops. They got to start being more aggressive. Uh, the Chargers don't have a, such a good pass defense. So why not take advantage of that? And uh, with Austin Eckler coming back, the Chargers, I expect them to try to run the ball. And then Justin Herbert, uh, instead of dropping back 52 times to throw it, maybe he can rely on some play action. Uh, but it's Kellen Moore versus his former team, uh, who is now the Chargers offensive coordinator. It used to be the Cowboys offensive coordinator. So <laughs> very uh, chess match here. We'll see because I know Kellen Moore went against that Cowboys, Dan Quinn's Cowboys defense every day in practice last year. So uh, he's going to have some tricks up his sleeve there. Uh, so, or some, some some knowledge about the Cowboys defense, but that doesn't mean the Cowboys defense won't have knowledge about Kellen Moore's offense either. So we'll get to see. It's going to be a fun Monday night. Uh, uh, Cowboys going to the bye after that game. So we'll see how this works out. Uh, if they win this game, maybe um, fewer changes will occur during the bye week. And if they lose this game, maybe some changes will be coming. So we'll keep an eye out for that. And uh, yeah, I got the Cowboys winning at So Fine Stadium, L.A., uh, over the Chargers, 28 to 27. Very close here. Very close. Margins. Margins. It's a game of inches. Game of inches. And uh, happy to announce, but that wraps up week six. Only two teams on a bye. It was four last week. Um, so we got 15 matchups. Uh, first first game tonight. Uh, see them Chiefs and those Broncos. Uh, we'll get to see Andy Reid against Sean Payton, two, old, two older head coaches facing each other. So... That's going to be fun to see. And I um, uh, wish, wish everyone the best. Having a good time at home. Stay safe. Uh, uh, tell your people you love them. Enjoy the food. Be grateful for things, for, for the things we take for granted. And uh, uh, let's, uh, let's pray and hope that no one gets hurt because we don't want to see that stuff. Uh, I'm not talking to no fantasy owners or none of that stuff because this shouldn't matter. There's people out there with children, families, and real lives out there who are sacrificing themselves to put on a... To, to, to play the sport that we love so much. I'll holla at you guys 
Enjoy y'all's weekend. Peace.